Hi guys, uh, before we dive into this week's episode, we just wanted to remind you that we are on Patreon, where you can support us from as little as £3, is yes. that correct? Yes, £3 a month. And you will get two bonus episodes a month, plus uh, both the live shows that we did at the stand in Glee in Glasgow, which were both very fun. You will also get uh, first dibs on tickets for upcoming live shows as yes. well. That is and connect. that is patreon.com forward slash some laugh. Connect. Got that and right. We Let's also have some you. stand up tickets on sh- on sale at the moment if you'd like to come see us live. We're all doing Edinburgh Festival this year and have all got tickets on sale for work in progress shows leading up to the fringe. Uh, I will be in Glasgow doing a couple of shows in Van Winkle, uh, Wee Room there as well as Aberdeen, Newcastle with a uh, certain Mr. Stephen Buchanan. This guy. And Edinburgh as well if you can't wait till August to see me in Edinburgh. Uh, where are you guys? I am London, Glasgow, Edinburgh, Newcastle with this guy over here, Jennings. Mm-hmm. And I'm in Edinburgh Fringe as well. All over the place. I'm doing three work in progress shows in Glasgow, one in Edinburgh, one in Perth, one in London. Tickets in my link tree. And then, yeah, at the Fringe, I'd love to see some listeners there Just same bear in mind if you do come and see us before August there is no obligation the shows will be good work so. in progress <laughs> yeah though well, might be bad that's how it works trial and error baby probably be good though probably if... no worse than a 6 out of 10 I'd say no but if there's nice audience members like the listeners it'll probably be fun that's it we've you know yeah. we, we've enjoyed meeting you at the live shows we've been doing the, the podcast live shows and we really would like to see you at the stand up shows as well so yes. hopefully see you there but aside from that guys Enjoy today's episode. Enjoy. Enjoy. Welcome to the Some Laugh Podcast. It could be like, oh, that was some laugh, or there was, there was just some laugh. Some laugh. Well, could. no promise in all laugh. No, <laughs> it's, there's going to be some. It's some laugh. So thanks for joining us, Daniel. So you were you were in Auckland, was it? Yes. When do you want to tell the, the <laughs> listeners what, what happened? When I you fucking do, and I wish I could remember her name so I could call her out. <laughs> 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 uh, I go from Singapore to Auckland Airport. It's just me. Uh, my family are arriving later on. I get through secu- security, and you know the joy of anywhere in the world when you pick up a Scottish accent somewhere else. Mm, yeah. Like it's a, whether it's a. Not like a punter, like I wouldn't, if I was in a bar and somebody was Scottish, I don't think I'd talk to that cunt. But if like they're in a position of power, like if they're yeah. a borders official or a police officer or anything like that, there's this lovely Glaswegian woman and I can tell straight away she's got that mothering voice that we're all used to. <laughs> and I'm like, and, and she's going through all my custom stuff and she's taking me over and she's very friendly and she sees all my visas and obviously all my visas say that I'm a comedian on it. She goes, oh, you're a comedian. I'm like, aye, aye. She goes, I love Scottish comedy. What's your name? And I'm like, well, you don't, you don't love Scottish comedy. <laughs> <laughs> like, all right, look, I'm like, I'm Daniel Sloss. It's, it's uh, fine. W- w- who are you into? She's like, oh, you know, I love Kevin. I'm like, we all love Kevin. That absolutely <laughs> makes sense. She's like, Frankie's excellent. I'm like, Frankie's one of the best. She's like, and obviously Billy Conley. And I'm like, yeah, obviously the fucking <laughs> big one. And I'm like, the fourth is me. Right, right. The, f- the, f- the fourth is me. Unless you're selling that Mount Rushmore, are you? <laughs> <laughs> Like unless it's ca- unless it's Calman because of the adverts, like, I'm, I'm, like it's got or or but Sterling she's be on the five or so. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> Could be uh, oh, Danny Boy. Could be Danny Boy, mm-hmm. and and also it would be fair because he spends a lot of time over there, so yeah. I, I would accept that. I'd, a man, I'd absolutely accept Sterling. That'd be fucking fair. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Lemmy? is Lemmy a shit? Yeah. No, because he's yeah. stand up. No, but I, he's Part in comedy, the, yeah, man. Yeah. Even even Fern Brady, she's been on Taskmaster. That's got like I get all these things. Yeah. She goes, my favorite is the Some Laugh podcast, and I'm going. <laughs> yes. I'm like, man, easy, I easy. also <laughs> love the podcast. But <laughs> how? There's, there's a lot there's, of eight people on this Mount Rushmore now. <laughs> <laughs> and she was just sitting there. She was just like, I've been listening to it all day. I only got into it about two or three months ago, but I love the boys. She, and she genuinely said, she said, she genuinely said, you should try and get on that. <laughs> because maybe that way more people will know who you are. <laughs> so here I am. And I can't remember your name, but if you're listening, you fucking bitch. <laughs> yeah. I, just, I love that's the only reason why you've came on, just so you yeah. can say that. And now Absolutely. You can... if, that's, if that's all we do for the <laughs> broadcast, <laughs> I'm <laughs> Daniel. Uh, <laughs> I also, I've, 
uh, please do that to every single person you meet at customs, whoever yeah. this woman is, because uh, we could maybe get a small high profile yeah, guest. Uh, <laughs> pretending yeah. she's never heard of Kevin Bridges next time. <laughs> <laughs> well, man, because I like Ray Bradshaw was in after, he, he, he's in Auckland after, I know, I mean, I know he's not uh, Scotch, but Ed Barnes has been over there. It's a good, yeah. mm-hmm. there's, there's yeah. a great way to get people on your podcast, which yeah. is to absolutely <laughs> destroy their fucking fragile ego. <laughs> <laughs> Did you kind of try and explain it? Look, I've been on Conan O'Brien, I've had Netflix shows, and you know, I've never heard of Conan O'Brien. I know Stephen Buchanan. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know Conan, who's this Conan O'Brien guy? Is he Scottish as well? <laughs> um, no, my, I, look, I, I like getting humbled. I think it's a very important thing. And, and also being like a Scottish comedian is a consistently humbling experience, I find. How do you mean? Because nobody cares how, <laughs> how big you get anywhere else in the world. Like it's... Scottish people, do you mean? Yeah, yeah. And I, I, do, I don't see it as tall poppy syndrome because I think there's like a bit of vindictiveness to po- tall poppy syndrome, which is like we don't, you know, we don't like you succeeding because we come from failure. I don't think it's that. It's just, it's wind your fucking neck in, cunt. <laughs> yeah. And 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 I like that. And as somebody who at several points in his career absolutely needed to have his neck winded in, <laughs> I am I am grateful for the times that. But man, like I, you know, it, we went, we were in India two or three months ago, like first time going over there to do comedy, and it was, uh, it was the big, it's the most famous I've ever been in my life. Right, right? we sold out ten thousand tickets in eight minutes. Fucking right, hell. Wow. but that's because the population of <laughs> Delhi is forty seven and a half million people. <laughs> the population of Bengaluru is thirty five point six, and the population of Mumbai is forty two. So it's a small. So it's not actually that yeah. much in the grand scheme of things. But when you get there, like they've got, like we're like we want to go and meet the fans afterwards, and our security are like you are not meeting fans after this. Like we just do not have the staff for that to take place, and we're like, right. wow. but we meet people all the fucking time. Sure enough, we get out of there, we've got f- fucking four bodyguards on each side who have to physically, like, create a wall to get us to the van to drive us back to the hotel. While, but the, this the, is the, what we need when we go through Christchurch Airport. <laughs> <laughs> Just her. <laughs> See, I love you so much. <laughs> um, like, I, and when we're driving to the hotel, like, two people get into, t- two fans get into, like, tuck tacks and, like, follow us for five minutes, bang on the windows when we're stopped in traffic, likes to get photos done that way mad absolute fucking mad and then like the day i come back from india from that insane joyous experience i take my son to a soft play in edinburgh (laughs) and i'm just there playing with and the woman who runs the soft play she goes you're 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 daniel i went yeah the the comedian Daniel. she goes oh I, I, I knew you'd given it up, but I didn't know it was for father. <laughs> <laughs> and I just had to be like, oh no, I'm, I'm, I've, I've not given it up, I'm still. She's like, but you've taken like some time off to be at that. And I'm like, no, still, still <laughs> going, funny. man. I was Elvis yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was the Indian version of the Beatles. <laughs> that is fascinating though, because I was actually curious about that, because it does seem like, because you've got a, you, you're gigging all over the world. People come, that many people come and see in fucking India and Australia and all these types of Russia places. Russia as well. That's a fucking. But did Russia before? Before it was before it was not before <laughs> yeah. it was evil. It's always been evil. <laughs> but like before it was like but Nazi. Who's yeah. gigging in Russia now? <laughs> <laughs> just for Putin. Just uh, a private gig. But <laughs> is that weird to you? That do you feel that you're more well known outside of Scotland or outside of even maybe the UK? Are you more well like known in America? Kind of these places, like, uh, and do you feel like I then you can back and somebody saying to you, oh, I'm, I heard oh, you gave up or whatever? Scotland's good because Sc- Scotland, Scottish people are disgustingly supportive of their own, like, they're very humbling, but they're also <laughs> it doesn't really matter what part of Scotland you come from, people are just happy that a local boy's done good. Like, if I were to gig up in Thurso or Inverness or Aberdeen, like, even though I'm from Fife, I'll get I'll cop a bit of shit from it. But it's not Fife boy done well. Yeah. It's Scottish boy done well, and that translates. Whereas, like fucking John Bishop's homecoming gig is in England. It's Liverpool. Um, Mickey Flanagan's is you know oh, sorry Peter Case's Manchester. Manfred's is Manchester. Fucking mm. Mickey Flanagan's London. Yeah. yeah, like it's all that Scotland doesn't matter where Kevin yeah. Bridges is. Kevin Bridges in fucking Forfar or Dunbar or whatever, the, whatever it is. But England, absolutely. I am infinitely more famous than every other. Country than 
England. <laughs> <laughs> like, pa- pa- it's, it's my smallest territory. It's my smallest market. And it's, it's, and it, man, it's, it's nice because it's nice to not have it at home because I guess that would make my fucking ego unbearable. But it is going from Australia where it's, you like have to wear a baseball cap and sunglasses and have my like hoodie up in certain public places uh-huh. to could masturbate on the underground in London. <laughs> <laughs> and people, would, people wouldn't even make a Louis C.K. reference. <laughs> why, why do you think that is? Yeah, why? Oh, uh, mostly my fault. Like I've, <laughs> I've spent the better part of 12 years at any opportunity I can openly shitting on the BBC right. and anyone who works there. I think they're all scum. I think <laughs> talent and- The views of Daniel Sloss are not the views of the scum. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I just think talent goes there to die. I, I laughed so hard when BBC Three died. I laughed at everyone who lost their jobs. I thought it was so funny. It was all their own fault. They don't know how to make content. Um, and and I'm I'm, I'm I'm quite a better person and I've uh, you know I, and I do this on podcasts I, I openly <laughs> bitch and piss and moan and I think I give off the vibe that I'm I'm not pleasant to work with. So. Is this <laughs> opinion coming from? Did you do a sitcom or something when you were younger? Is that where you're basing this? So one of well, there's many reasons I hate the BBC. Uh, first and foremost, I did a, a children in need gig at the fucking SEC when I was 19 years old. And everyone was booked to do like four minutes. It was televised. Mark Nelson was booked onto it. Mark Nelson, one of the best Scottish comedians going out there. And because I'd done a little bit more TV than him, i.e. the Paul O'Grady show when I was 17 years old. Yeah. I wanted to bring that up. That's the first time I'd ever seen it. I remember watching it. Yeah. Aye. 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 That was a weird fucking... Because g- it was pre-Watershed. So they made me change my material. But they made it infinitely worse than the original joke. Because right. the joke uh, where I went on was a joke... It was the shaving joke. So it was this whole bit about how my dad was talking to me about shaving, but I thought he was talking to me about sex. Fuck you. A bunch <laughs> of fucking innuendos and puns. Yeah. And one of the lines that is in it originally was him saying to me, now don't worry, the first time you do it, there will be a little bit of blood. That's fine. That's normal. And the BBC, oh, sorry, ITV were like, no, that's too... Too, too risky. Too, too risky. What we think you should do is, can you say there will be a little bit of pulpy mess? And I'm like, that's more that disgusting. is hot, yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so much worse. This doesn't really make sense. Not at all. Yeah. Like, it's almost a purely say, why is your face getting pu-? But that's the line they made me change it to. <laughs> so that's the line you went with? Yeah. Happy mess? Yeah, 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 yeah. And, oh, yeah. And, oh. and then, yeah, it was. Is that why in every ITV sitcom, whenever they order a drink, it's always a pulpy, messy Mary? <laughs> 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 that's, true, right? <laughs> that's what they've got to say in front of the mirror each time. <laughs> <laughs> so children in need thing I was booked to do we were all booked to do four minutes uh, people were overrunning not people were overrunning Nina Conti overran by <laughs> nine minutes and was repeatedly on her, like on the camera in front of her it was like get off the stage get off the fucking stage for the love of God you're so unprofessional get <laughs> off of the stage Damn. and she still did 13 minutes and on Mark Nelson's birthday the biggest gig of his fucking career the BBC went Sorry, you're cut. We're not even going to let you go on stage really? and do the gig. We're not. We're not even just cutting you from the show, like the 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 TV one. We're cutting you from the full fucking thing. They didn't pay him. Sake. There was another time I did a TV warm up for BBC, which I shouldn't have done. I was eighteen. I had no material. I bombed on my fucking arse because <laughs> I was talking about wanking in front of pensioners, <laughs> and like to the point where a woman in the front row hated me so much. Right, she was in a wheelchair. She leaned over and got like her walking stick and almost <laughs> fell out of her chair trying to just hit me like off. <laughs> like she just wanted it to stop and I did like it was a three hour sh- film in I managed to do like I managed to survive two hours and 15 minutes of like going on and just bombing in front of this audience who hate me and the BBC then went and I went at the end of it I went they hate me and I hate them and I'm not warming them up if anything I'm just making this worse for everyone here uh-huh. I think it's I think it's the smart move to stop and they went great cool we're not going to pay you a fucking penny they then, and then I did the fucking BBC sitcom with them, with The Adventures of Daniel, which is the worst title for any sitcom, I believe, in the history of the world. <laughs> the Adventures of fucking Daniel. <laughs> and, that, and that was their idea. Like, let's, uh, Seinfeld, we'll not just call it Sloss, we'll not just call it Danny or anything, yeah. just... The Adventures of Fucking Daniel. And it's not a kid's show or anything. It's... No, <laughs> no. And they, the, the writers were brilliant on our show, but they were ruined by the fact that you've got BBC executives who've never spent time in a fucking comedy club, do not know how jokes are formed, but 
they will stand on behind a fucking two way mirror and watch like little fucking network groups and be like, oh, now we know what comedy is. And it's just these people are devoid of talent and they suck. And whenever they talk, <laughs> whenever they talk to me, it's so you think you're funny parties. I swear at them. Whenever I do podcasts like this, I openly shit on the BBC. And 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 I also I bitch about the London circuit a lot. So I just I I am very <laughs> abrasive <laughs> and not pleasant to be around. And because of that not famous in the UK. The saddest part about that is that uh, because, you know, we are still trying to get on the BBC, Mark Nelson, <laughs> unfortunately, is going to get cut out again. <laughs> <laughs> the reason I was thinking you're saying you're maybe not as well known in England as, as places abroad, because you've obviously done hundreds of like telly in America, obviously Netflix specials as well, Whereas you've not done as much. I know you've done what, maybe like one more a week, maybe a couple of panel shows, I don't know. But the, you've done more telly in America than like Britain, basically. Uh, yeah, but that's also that's also the UK's fault. Like well, not really. Like there's like I would ne like I would never do celebrity juice. Or right, any yeah. any any of those BBC three, ITV four, where it's comedians going on and doing stuff that's not being a comedian when it's like hey we want to sell you as a product as a character as this as opposed to america goes here's four minutes of stand-up here's yeah. seven minutes of stand-up and that's what it is on all five of their big shows because they know that's what stand-ups are good at it's only now america's really sort of delving into let's turn comedians into personalities but all of their stuff is stand-up 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 mm. BBC don't do that. Like there was the only stand-up shows that have ever been are Live at the Apollo, which has sucked for ten fucking years now. <laughs> uh, McIntyre's Roadshow, which was great and made the careers of Bridges, Bridges. Milliken, Manford, uh, Mickey Flanagan. Um, Rob Brydon's show had stand-up on it for a bit. Jason Manford's Comedy Rocks had stand-up for a bit. Paul Grady, Michael Grady famously. Paul Grady. Grady. <laughs> <laughs> Russell Howard's Eye. There's just not really a there's not really opportunities as much opportunities over here for stand-ups to be stand-ups yeah. and i always saw those like fucking the celeb ability and stuff man pe and people are funny on that shows but i'm not likable <laughs> As myself, <laughs> right? There are, there are comedians. Have booked you as yourself today. You <laughs> like I, like, if, if, man, I, Gareth Watt and Ian Sterling are will be really, really good on these shows because they're funny fucking lads who can interact with other people and have banter and be affable. That's not me. I hate everyone and everything. And if you're like, oh, which one of these mince pies is dog food in it? I'm like, I'm a real artist. Why am I here? So you're, you're not going to like, you know, you won't give up to the conceit of it because you just think, I fucking I'll have to though. Uh, well, like it's, it's, uh, oh, I reckon point. at one point in the next five years, I'll just have to. I'm just going to get an email from you saying, please take down that episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Taskmaster finally asked me to be on. Please delete <laughs> everything. Just lost his celebrity finger in our ITV <laughs> Coming soon. So you obviously have had that opportunity to go on and be a stand up on American telly, done Conan a bunch of times. Mm -hmm. What, how did that come about initially? And how, what was it first like when you done that? Uh, it came in initially just the, the guy that used to book uh, Conan was a guy called JP Buck uh, who's now a very good friend because he's given me my career <laughs> and uh, that's the least he's due <laughs> um, he would come over to the fringe every year because he genuinely unlike executives from ITV BBC he would actually spend his own money to go to this festival and would take comedians recommendations as opposed to hype and, and yeah, yeah and just he would come over and watch all this comedy he saw me, he asked me if I wanted to do Conan. I was obviously like, yes, but in this industry, you're like, this is a, this is this won't happen. This is some sort of trick. Mm -hmm. Something will be taken away from me. I flew the entire way to America, uh, doing gigs in Denver, to like run through my set of the comedy works out there. And he's talking me through all my material. He's he's like, he's super confident and he's like, man, I think you're gonna have a great fucking spot on the show in two days and I'm like something is going to happen that's going to get this fucking taken away from me though I can just fucking feel it we're driving on the way to Warner Brothers Studios and Nelson Mandela dies <laughs> like to the point where our, our, like the driver there is just like it's on the radio he's like oh my god 
<laughs> I think Nelson Mandela died, and I'm like, I fucking knew it. Man. <laughs> <laughs> and fuck, Daniel's really broken up with Nelson Mandela. <laughs> <laughs> Is that an inspiration to you? Uh, just be sobbing. They're like, God, really? I'm like, yeah, I guess I just hated the apartheid so much. <laughs> just, and, I'm, and then I'm like, again, the standard, like, what a fucking arsehole. One of the greatest men that ever lived <laughs> is dead. And I'm there being like, I guess I'm not on TV anymore. <laughs> and we get there. Conan does like three minutes at the top about it. Um, but man, it's man, it's one of the most. It's like uh, it's somebody that. I mean, do you get? I'm, I don't imagine you guys get nervous much anymore. Still, it depends on the gig. Little, oh, yeah. yeah, corporates yeah. and stuff. I'm doing a corporate on Thursday, and I'm like, I, I can't fucking be arsed with yeah, it. Conan's like, one thing. Wait till you've done the fish. What is it? The Fisherman's <laughs> Annual. The Fisher, <laughs> Fisher's uh, Fisherman Awards. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ever done that? Have you? Yeah. I thought that was only in Stardew Valley. <laughs> that wasn't. Man, corporates are the. I don't do corporates anymore because, right. because there's there's no amount of money you can pay me to feel that anxiety all day. Yeah, like the second you wake up in the morning, yeah, it's the worst day of your life. For yeah. me, it's like even weeks before. I'm yeah, like, I've man, got that yeah. thing in two weeks' time that I can't be arsed. Are you them. writing like? Are you, are you just doing a set? Are you writing like? He's got a really good bit, bit. What is the Jesus bit? Fish nets and chill or whatever. That was years ago. Come on, net, net fish and chill. I still stand by that punchline. It was an old. It was years ago. I don't know why you're bringing that up, but it was years ago. It was like the, the joke about now. Jesus dating, and the punchline was net fish and chill. I, that's a good punchline. It's all right. It's all right. I'm not going to say that to you these sure old cunts. This is good topic. Uh, it's pulpy mess all down his hands. Yeah. So <laughs> But basically, I need to do like twenty minutes and then host the awards and give out the awards and all that sort of shit. Mm-hmm. So it's going to be awful, of course. Mm-hmm. It is. Aye, aye. But you were nervous before the co- first ever Conan O'Brien. Sorry, to <laughs> cut yeah. the Steve's the praying for, for the death of like the Archbishop of Canterbury or something. <laughs> <laughs> can derail that game. <laughs> It would, have, it would have to be fishing royalty. Who's that? Well, Robson Green. Yeah. Like if he died, you're like, okay, I can do seven minutes at the top, which is tribute, and that I'll just say all his greatest moments. Um, nervous man, like genuinely nervous, which I hate because you know if you if you don't get nervous, because I mean, my ego is always like, man, you know what you're doing, you're really good at this. Nerves will just get in the fucking way. But then, like Steve Coogan was on the show before oh, me, and up. for the and and for the only time in fucking the history of Conan the guest decided to stay on the couch. Like normally the guest will do the thing and then fuck off. And then Steve Coogan's like, oh, I'll just sit and watch. I'll just stay here for the rest of it. So I walk out and not only Conan, who I'm obviously a huge fucking fan of because I grew up on The Simpsons and I think he's hysterical, but then fucking Steve Coogan. And I'm like, if I bomb here, I'm actually going to just kill myself. Yeah, you like got the Simpsons and Alan Partridge. Right? That's <laughs> so fucking weird. But you can't, you cannot fucking, but I can bomb to fucking a thousand strangers and yeah, it'll hurt my feelings and I'll, you know, maybe drink for two days. <laughs> but like, if you bomb in front of fucking monorail <laughs> and part, man, fuck that. And it, thankfully it went uh, well. But if you watch the end of the set, uh, Conan is visibly shocked by how decent I was. <laughs> like he, he really was he was like he's like oh my god that was really good <laughs> and it was genuine shock and surprise because apparently after that one he phoned up JP and he tried to get me back on the show the next day wow. like he was like because I had you know because I'm like American comedians um, because we do the fringe I was sitting on four hours of you know not yeah. all gold obviously but like material that we've worked mm. over the over the years um, and I mean I didn't go back on the next day I went on back like a month later but Conan went out of his way he got me up De fucking development deal with Warner Brothers. Like he literally wow. phoned Warner Brothers and was like, "Get this kid, this wow. develop." I mean, nothing happened with it. I got to develop. The adventures of Daniel goes. To <laughs> <laughs> oh God, that would have been the best advice. <laughs> Man, BB- BBC Three not picking it up, but TBS being like, "We'll get it four fucking seasons." <laughs> what age were you when that the first time you were on Conan? Conan, I think I was about twenty. 22, 23. But by that that's point, that's young, but by that point, you'd already been doing it, what, five years or more? Yeah, yeah. It started when I was about 17, officially. Aye. And how how was it starting at that young in comedy? Were you doing normal, like the stand and... S- stand, uh, stand Edinburgh uh, was like... I, I, def- I did like... I did a comedy course, which I'm like deeply ashamed of. <laughs> I don't think it's... I don't think you done a comedy shit. course? Well, I don't, but I'd kind of just done it. I, but I'd missed it out, so I'd done like a year of gigs. So I'd done 30 gigs and then I'd done it. And the main thing I got out of it was like, oh, 
if you've done more gigs, you're better. Yeah. And because I, I was better on the cunts and not done anything. Oh, yeah. like, all right, cool. Just keep doing that. Well, it's yeah. also they're always not. This isn't true anymore because I've seen some comedy uh, classes now, like being run by people who are actually legitimately good at comedy. Like I know Jeff Innocent does comedy courses, and mm. Jeff Innocent is brilliant. Yeah. But ninety five percent of the teachers <laughs> of comedy classes are not circuit regulars or. So I, I'm, my mum signs me up to this thing when I'm like 16. It was Where was it? Laughing Horse. Right. Uh, oh. but, but like Laughing Horse at a venue. That, it was like during the Fringe. It was like down, like beyond the fucking playhouse into Leith, upstairs, this uh, comedian who does, who I've never seen on the circuit since. I occasionally <laughs> will see his like poster like, during the free Fringe. And I'll be like, okay, so he's still going. That's, that's good. And <laughs> yeah. it was lovely. But it was mainly just like mic technique and stuff. And none of it was you know, the writing, jokes. writing or how to edit or anything like that. Yeah. Um, and then that resulted in like a gig upstairs, you know, you write for a week and then you get do a gig to like 12 people upstairs. And it was, it was enough that like, I was like, okay, I definitely want to do that again. Mm. But like the only reason I got laughs is because it was my dad, five mates, and then all those other people support that. I don't think there was any neutrals in the audience. Yeah. Like people yeah. who'd walked in off the street. So you were on Paul Grady when you were dead young. So like, how long was the period of you doing like shite gigs before Paul Grady? End up in the telly and stuff like that? Was it quite quick or? It was, yeah, yeah. so it was, yeah, no, it was quite quick. So I started doing, I, I think I did my first stand spot when I was 17. So I think I was just turned like 17. So it was just after the French because right. that was during the 2007 French. And then in that year, did the stand, they were very supportive of me and like sort of got behind me, even though I was, I mean, I mean, my early jokes were literally just uh, masturbating. And I think one of my first jokes was about how big my mum's tits were. <laughs> because like, I was right. Relatable. I, uh, well, because it was the one I like, I knew my mum, I know my mum's big tits because I got bullied for it in high school and not just by the pupils, but like my old techie teacher, like when we had parents evening, like we, we fit, he, man, he got fired like two years after I left because he was so unprofessional. Like he was, he was a real, he was a great bloke, awful teacher, really bad. Yeah, uh, I mean, you think Nina Conti's unprofessional. That's my that's, that's another level, man. man, literally the day after fucking the parents teachers, like, uh, I walk into techie second period and he, and he went, has anyone else seen the size of Sloss's mum's death? Oh, no. And I'm like, yeah, oh, uh, yeah. And obviously all the fucking lads were like, hey, hey, hey. And so I had a joke about that. Um, and then, you know, man, I, you know, back when, did you ever do the Mercat when that was still around, the Mercat bar? Was that before your time? Mm, before, before my time. Before. Before. It was run by before. Kira Murphy. It was downstairs. No, it was nice, no. but it was like one of those gigs where most of the time comedians yeah. outnumbered yeah. punters. Where uh, were you living at this point? I was still living in Fife, in so Ricardo, it? Uh, East Weems. Right, yeah. Aye, that was when my mum bought me a fake ID so I could gig <laughs> at so many places. Because That's the, class. Aye, yeah. the stand were decent. Like the stand were like, oh, as long as you don't drink, we'll yeah. let you come in and fucking perform. Yeah. But some other places, like the Hydro Connect Festival, wouldn't let me do it unless I was eighteen. I'm pretty sure Queen Margaret University, even though they had students that were younger than eighteen, and the uh, the fake ID my mum got was awful. Like it was, you know, it was a fucking like, boomer buying a fucking <laughs> fake idea like online. Loving yeah, yeah. My, my, I wish it was that good. Like at least, I think there was like even a hologram. It was just a picture of, she, first of all, she didn't use like a, like a fucking passport photo. She used a headshot. <laughs> she, like, like my first headshot, she put that on and it was essentially just a little card that went, I am 18. Like, I don't even think it like was- a football sh manager regen. <laughs> <laughs> And then, yeah, so I did So You Think You're Funny, got into the final of that, and then during that, Fringe was also doing my first Fringe show, uh -huh. and from that's when I got the Paul Grady show. Yeah, because I've heard you talk about, because obviously you got like a lot of telly stuff quite quite early on when, as you were saying, your, your stuff was, was I, I guess, a bit more mainstream or a bit more just, you're a young guy and you're just talking about what you know about, mm. whereas now... Just you know, you don't shy away figuring into darker subjects and talking about you know. I, it feels like you've got a kind of determination to try and wring laughs out of some of the most terrific aspects of life or the darker places and um and that. And so, what was that period like? Because was there a period where you felt you almost had to kind of shed your original 
sort of identity as a kind of young Justin Bieber haired comic <laughs> guy and a more what you what you're trying to work towards and where you're at now. Well, I think it was more like you know TV forces you to change. Like my when you're when you're young and you're doing comedy, you're just trying to find jokes, whatever's fucking funny, and you don't really have any strong opinions on anything. And if you do, you're not really confident enough to say them on stage. Um, you're just trying to get used to being on stage and, and you know getting your rhythm and finding your fucking voice. And then, but with TV, because it's all like, because it's such a brilliant opportunity, but because, you know, it's the censorship that nobody actually wants to talk about in this fucking country, right? People go, you can't say anything anymore. And you go, well, you can say whatever you like on stage, but the BBC will not let you, you know, talk about fucking drugs openly. They will not let you swear before 5 p.m. They won't let you openly fucking bash religion and stuff. This is like real censorship that goes on to television. So what then happens is you're then just doing your cleanest stuff. And then when you're doing your cleanest stuff, people go, oh my God, he's a cheeky chappy. <laughs> and you're really enjoying it because you go from like selling out, for, barely even selling out 50 seater rooms to selling out like 300 seaters. Mm. But like when you're on stage, man, it's... You know, it's a choice comedians have to make at a certain point, which is, you know, when you've been in this, what, do you want to be successful or do you want your own audience? Mm. Like, do you want massive audiences or do you want yours? And it, it, the answer is yours. You do not, you do not want to walk out to an audience of people and go, I'm going to have to find a way to entertain you. I'm going to have to find a way to limit what I do and and change what I do to make it palatable for you. I like talking about fucking horrific stuff because it weeds out the weak so quickly. <laughs> so fucking quickly. If you go on stage and you're like, all right, lads, let's talk about rape and slavery. And people go, oh, I don't think we could. Good. Oh, bye. But the, man, there's so, there's so much comedy out there for you. Milton Jones, Tim Vine, the brilliant comedians. They don't push any fucking boundaries. Go see that. There's comedy for everyone. What I'm doing right now is not for you, and that's fine yeah. by me. So did you almost do that on purpose to get rid of audience members? That <laughs> not, not uh, well, kind of, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, there was, I would specifically, like, um, the first joke I ever remember, like, really splitting the audience down the middle was when I was talking about religion, right? And I've, I hate religion, and I've hated religion since I was very, very young. But, like, obviously, when you want to be likable on stage and everything, you're like, oh, no, everyone's entitled to their opinion. And then one day I was like, you know what? No, you're not. Like, and if you, and, and, and you know what? If you are entitled to your opinion, I think it's pathetic. I think you're all uneducated and let's fucking go. And like every day during this fringe at the EICC. What age are you now, by the way? Sorry. At this point, I'm 21. Right, okay. I'm 21. So like I've done, I've done Paul O'Grady. I've done McIntyre's Roadshow, which to be fair, they, they let me away with a lot of shit that I wasn't expecting to get away with. Uh, I've done the Paul O'Grady show. And I'd done Jason Manford's Comedy Rocks. So I'd done like, and 8 of 10 Cats, which I fucking bombed on. <laughs> oh man, it's, uh, yeah, yeah, really bad. Like the first one, my God, I'd watched it since I was a kid and it was like one of my favourite shows. And like, I think I kind of just treated it like being there, I was kind of just like starstruck or showstruck. Like right. just couldn't believe I was sat there. So I was just, I got a lot of TV time because I was just laughing at everyone's jokes because that's all I knew how to <laughs> do. <laughs> but like, I didn't have the, I, d I didn't have the ability to like jump in ahead or interrupt someone or get, and, I, and whenever I was delivering my jokes, my stuff was bought. I did like three jokes and they all fucking ate shit to the point where I lost full confidence. Like, Fuck. and I just didn't, I didn't say anything. And Jason Manfred, and I'll, I'll always love him for this, could clearly see that I had lost full faith and I just hadn't said anything for half an hour. And he just, I've got all my jokes in front of me and he just taps on one like that, right? And I'm like, what? And he just, he perfectly sets up that joke. As in, does this thing where he pretends it's his opinion, but it's just the setup to my fucking wow, joke. that's class. And then I get to do the fucking punchline. Huge round of applause, right? That's Jason, amazing. And I was like, and that got, Jimmy Carr picked up on a similar thing. Like he was the one where he would then realize I was being quiet and then would go, okay, Daniel, what do you think about this? Yeah. And so, yeah, really, really supportive. That's why, you know, Jimmy Carr can make fun of as many gypsies as he's like, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> <laughs> as long that's as amazing, he's... though, because that's like, obviously, when you're with comedians and that, we're quite, you know, you want the limelight for yourself and that. And then if he's setting you up for that and he's saying that you've maybe not been having a good time so far, that's fucking, that's aye, class, isn't it? Aye. What's it? But what they say about those shows that Mark the Week it was always a bit cutthroat and people yeah, weren't doing exactly, that. Yeah. Like that so. so you don't hear that as much but mm. so what's the, that would be my biggest fear what was it what was the feeling like like thinking I'm 
going to die and they're putting this out on TV. Man, imagine losing your erection when your favourite porn star wants to fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> like, can you imagine, and you're stone cold sober. You've been preparing for this for two weeks. She's been sending you fucking DMs. She's like, I'm going to write you. you Do you know the depressing me. thing about that is, Daniel, I'm, I suspect that that might not even be a hypothetical for you given the fucking showbiz success that you went on to have. I'll, I'll name drop some celebrity shags after the podcast. <laughs> the real adventures of Daniel. <laughs> uh, so you were going to say you, got, you had this routine about religion was the first. Oh yeah, more yeah. Risky one. Well, so yeah, and I, I man, I, and it was the first. It was one of the first jokes I ever wrote where, and it's one of the greatest feelings as a comedian, where other comedians come up to you and go, "Fuck, I wish I'd written that." And that's that. That's that for me was the first time I ever felt like a fucking real comedian. When when I, yeah. you know, when people like fucking Nelson would come up to you and be like, "Fuck, I wish that gag was mine." Mm -hmm. You go, "Oh, because yeah. I I feel this about everyone else's material." So the fact that it's coming this way must mean that I've got to this uh, level of 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 ability. Yeah. And minimum minimum every day, fifteen to twenty people walking out because <laughs> and we and we we had to give them all full fucking ref because man, they'd come to see the fucking floppy haired cunt from. Yeah, yeah. Paul O'Grady being yeah. like talking about his pulpy, messy <laughs> vag, but not vag, lady, lady slit or whatever nice PG thing they wanted me to call it. Um, I and, and uh, but it was it was and it was difficult, but man, that's that's I I do that all the time now. Like I really like I, every single time I go on stage now, I make sure that I'm saying something that's going to upset my audience, not the royal. Well, I know for a fact that 60% of my audience on average are women and 80% of them lean to the left of centre. Mm -hmm. So there is nothing brave, there is nothing skillful, and there's nothing artistic about me going on stage to a left-wing audience and being like, gay people are people. <laughs> Trans women are women. Leftism is the... None of that, that's not challenging. There's nothing brave about going on stage to a room full of people who agree with you and saying stuff they agree with. Your job is to provoke, borderline, antagonise. Like, that's what the, the game is. Even and, if those are the things that you think, you, you would go, well, I'm just going to play devil's advocate anyway. And, yeah, because yeah. I think, yeah, because if you don't get the, if you don't get the levels of my comedy, like, if it, you know, if, it's, if you can't tell that I'm saying this particular just to be a dick <laughs> so, so many of my jokes is just me saying horrifically awful things because those things are the funniest things to say and it's not it's not funny because I mean them and it's not funny because if those things were to actually happen it would be funny it's funny because that is the worst fucking thing to say and it's absolutely unjustifiable to say it but what's more unjustifiable, unjustifiable is trying to justify that and that's a really fun I get so bored by these fucking like London fucking Soho lefty comedians who go on stage and just fucking preach about how great fucking Corbyn was or and all these things. And I'm like, man, you're not doing anything. Like, if you want to do that, become a right-wing comedian and then fucking convince those audience members to come to your side. <laughs> you're just you're just doing what religious people do and you're going, geez, this is great. This is brilliant. You know, there's no it's 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 preaching to the to the the converted. And there's just I I I I think there's zero skill to it mm. there also seems to be an aspect that you seem to take a perverse enjoyment <laughs> from <laughs> pissing people off and making them think that you're a dick yeah man like it's <laughs> <laughs> like, not that normal by the way it's not, <laughs> it's not. Yeah. I, it's, it's just I, I don't get me wrong it's I've, probably what it takes to succeed in comedy and stuff like that as well to an extent but like uh, it, it is interesting that you I do think that as like in a personal level you seem to enjoy it I hate I hate the phrase rent f living rent free in someone's head, right? I think it's just it's been it's been abused by fucking football fans for the past five years, and it's uh, kind of yeah. lost all fucking meaning. But I agree with the se <laughs> <laughs> like, see when people are upset by my fucking jokes, which again I will defend anyone's right to be offended by any joke. People are allowed to be offended by comedy, of course you are, right? You, I don't think you're allowed to go out and. and demand that it be deplatformed or taken off air or that this person shouldn't be able to work again. But you are absolutely allowed to go, I think that joke's awful. I think that joke's cruel. I hate that joke. And here's and I hate that joke. And I'm going to tell you I fucking hate that joke. That's allowed. It's an uncomfortable experience as a comedian and as a performer. But, you know, that's what the fucking job is. But also, I don't know 
your fucking name? Why would you let me know that I upset you so much? Do you understand how powerful that makes me in my head? <laughs> like a joke that I didn't write with you in mind, that I just a joke that I just thought was funny, just about this fucking thing. And you, in the purest form of narcissism, have sat in a room of a thousand other people and watched me do one joke about diabetics, and you've gone, my mum's diabetic. That joke's attacking my mum, therefore that joke's attacking me. You've done, you've done this, you fucking upset me. And then you just tweet me or you write me a fucking email and you let me know how much I'm saying. And I'm like, man, who are you? <laughs> like, but when I don't enjoy something, like, don't be wrong, I, 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 there's so many comedians I fucking think their jokes are shit. I don't message them afterwards. I just go, I'm not going to watch their comedy again and I move on with my life. Mm. But when you wind someone up so, and not intentionally, not even intentionally, I, I, well, not 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 intentionally, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. There's just something in there. I don't know whether it's a sibling thing or like just the you, I'm winding someone up can be fun, and, <laughs> and inadvertently doing it is is great. And I, I also think it often speaks to you've angered someone because you're right. And that's what's upset them. Like, I believe that the earth is round, right? So if you were to come up to me and you were a flat earther and be like, look, this fucking dumb cunt, this fucking <laughs> dumb cunt thinks the world's fucking round, what more on? None of that angers me because I know I'm right. And no amount of you insulting my view makes me question my view. I would be annoyed if you attack something I believed in and it started making me question that thing and I started getting upset. Yeah. That's when I feel good. That's really brave yeah. you to say as well, because I know for a fact that 90% of your audience are flat earthers. <laughs> <laughs> They're really going to hate you saying oh, that. My, my fans are thick enough to be flat earthers. <laughs> I, yeah, I would. <laughs> So you have that experience in the UK, you go to America, you do some of the, you do Conan a bunch of times, end up with the two Netflix specials. Mm -hmm. How does that change things? Does that, like, because see before, like, what kind of gigs were you doing in America at that point when you'd done a few Conans versus how things changed once you'd done the Netflix specials? Oh, so from Conan, I was finally like, the was finally given the opportunity to do like the American comedy clubs, which is th just always the fucking dream as a comedian. It's to, like go out there and you know do the comedy works and play the improv and comedy on state in Madison, Wisconsin is one of the best comedy clubs in the world. To go there and do like the weekend runs, you know, uh, still I would say like fifty percent of the audience is there just because they're out there supporting the local comedy club, and then fifty percent of the audience are there to see me from Conan, and all great, loved it. It, it also meant that I got to like skip a bit of the circuit out there. Mm. Like, because I'd started in Scotland, you, you, I mean, you know, you start in Scotland, you become successful in Scotland, and then you've got to go down to England. Mm. And England goes, okay, start again. Yeah. And you go, no, man. <laughs> like, I'm I'm headlining up here. I'm not an open spot down there. That's not the fucking disparity. Yeah. We've got a higher rate of successful comedians than you fucking do down there. Like, <laughs> a disproportionate amount of Scottish comedians are funnier. Like, just statistically, number-wise. We're very good at producing. I'm not starting again. Can you tell that to the comedy store? Because I'm going to do an open spot this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. I was headlining this the stand. I was doing the jonglers up here in the car. And again, I love the comedy store, but they're like, we need you to do another five. And I'm like, no, you don't. Man. Yeah. But all right, it's the game. Head down, do it. You start again in London. You do the fucking start. And then you go to Australia and Australia's like, guess what? You're a 10 again. And you're like, I'm not a fucking 10 again. So I didn't want to do it in America. Conan got me sort of beyond that. And then, and then Netflix came out and it was overnight difference like it was going from you know 400 seaters in scotland 200 seaters in england 150 to 200 seaters in europe and just comedy clubs in america to 2000 up here 1000 in england 3000 in europe and anywhere between one and 3000 in america and in within wow. within two weeks of netflix coming out and then wow. it just kept building because weirdly enough the two specials that I did for whatever fucking reason just went quite cult and successful like Jigsaw really affected a lot of people and then I think because Dark spoke about death a lot and a lot of people know disabled people and, and everyone fucking deals with death people just chose to relate to it and it sort yeah. of blew up more than we ever thought but yeah I mean it was night and day yeah, yeah. part of Jigsaw that was the uh, splitting up marriages thing Aye. what Aye. number are you on now 
Uh, no idea, but it's where it's. I know the divorces are approaching four hundred. Fuck, you uh, could fill out a good theatre just from the divorces. I know, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Make, make make them bring all their new partners yeah. <laughs> and just do the show again and see if I can. We had actually went to see that show when That's you've done true. it in Glasgow at the concert hall place, mm. and um, what I always remember about that show because you, I know you're fond of getting on about how many divorces you've on marriages you've been responsible for ending. But there's a bit in that show that I think you might have actually saved, like, maybe more marriages when you talk about why guys should shave their ass. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, was, but that was actually, it was a very well-argued bit. Do you? Ever sit? Do you know, here's, here's the thing you I'll tell you. Let's see, talk, about, talk about living rent-free in your head. See, every time I shave my ass, I think about you. <laughs> I'm the same, I'm not as that shaved tip, but... Uh, <laughs> Can I ask how you? Because it's not a graceful no, it's process. Not graceful. And I'm so I, I used to be skinnier than this, so it used to be quite easy for me to get my legs far up, further back in front of the mirror. So are you? That's are you? Doing, is it? Are you lying Pussy on your back? Uh, kind of. You're like, like a cat licking your ass like all this, <laughs> in front of the mirror like that. Oh now it's quite difficult doing that because I'm quite a bit chubby on this. So. Mm. I, it's, it's, I don't know. I don't really know what I do. Kind of. I need tips. I love the idea you got like a personal trainer. Like, what's your fitness goal? <laughs> 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 kind of like this. <laughs> I just want to be able to shave my ass. Have you seen Daniel Sloss? Have you got a technique? So I, man, it's like the, here's the thing about being a bloke. Nobody teaches you how to do the things that you really sort of have to do. Like nobody ever taught us how to wank, no. and it's and and that's why all of us have very different wanking methods and where we aim it and how we do it. Like if you, it can't be that many, can there? Man, but I like the. I have no friends. Here's the different types of wankers you get. You could get people to do it. You get Is people, this about the BBC again? <laughs> <laughs> You get people who stand up and just like wank straight into a toilet. That's theirs. No, you get, oh, come on, man. Like, you get people who where's like the romance in that. <laughs> Oh, so you get kind of weak knees after ejaculation, so that that's dangerous. Do you? Do you, Do you Steve's not? In, yeah, it used to be in better shape now. Gets weak, <laughs> weak knees now. I know that's what they say. You get weak at the knees, like if somebody you fancy something. Or something. I, I don't know. I don't think it'd be that bad that you you wouldn't be confident standing over a <laughs> toilet. Fan. I've never tried that. I did because well, as a teenager, I did most of my wanking in the bathroom <laughs> because the the bathroom had a lock on it and uh -huh. my room didn't. Mm. So it's like I would, and I now as an adult realize this is weird. I would have. I would put like a bit of toilet, a bit of towel just in front of the toilet and I'd be kneeling on that <laughs> and I'd want, and then I'd stand up actually. and yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> was, at the end I'd <laughs> um, but, man, but some people man there's people out there I don't want to judge here you know whatever, all wine is good kink shame <laughs> there's people be, and I would never do this because this is disgusting to me there's people out here who just like just lie on their back and just wank straight onto their belly and then just man no, if my, if, no, if, if, no, no no but they wipe even then man if my cum <laughs> touches me my day is ruined really <laughs> oh yeah I didn't man know there was another way to do it do you see, <laughs> just, <laughs> see no, no, but here's the thing so maybe it is me that's the fucking freak but yeah man if I'm like sometimes I'll have a, a you know, if I'm if I'm if I'm hung over oh, and bed. I don't want to <laughs> Italian <laughs> restaurant <laughs> 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 Somebody coming up Parmesan No no um, So I'll do it Yeah Sometimes I'll Create the bib there And do it on myself If I'm not feeling Particularly that's good Amazing oh, That's man. insane So with the Shaving the arsehole thing Because someone told me How to do it <laughs> I get like Three bits of toilet paper And I just sort of Put it on the floor And then I kind of Just squat Over it <laughs> And then, like, with my ha thumb up at the fucking blade is, like, an outward motion. I don't look. I'm very much, like, I feel. And then... And you got to shower anyway, because yeah, any time yeah, yeah. you cut any hair, you need to shower afterwards. But, yeah. <laughs> and just in case you've got some frothy goo pouring out your arse after yeah, yeah. you. Or a wee crack, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, just, on that wanking thing, sorry, I just want to circle back to that. Uh, there was a comedian who told me, I'm not going to name who, who it is, but I'll tell you after. <laughs> but he said that what he used to do for wanking 
and this is such an insane thing it's going to stay with me for the rest of my life he used to put two bits do you bits... think about him whenever you want <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> two bits of raw liver between the toilet seat That's... and shag the no <laughs> I don't know why I love You've seen some like knockoff American pie. I kind swear of someone told me this, and after listening, that apologies. Sorry, I'm I'm confused about what part of the toilet seat are they putting it on? Between the toilet seat and the porcelain. That is so fucked. Putting up. two bits of raw liver and then shagging it. There is a line to kink shaming. And <laughs> that is, that is that's it. past it. I hope they had a fucking also, look. how degrading is that to women? <laughs> like, how, how little pussy have you had in your life that you're like, it, I, it must just feel like yeah. two slabs of cold, dry meat. He said they did put them in the microwave first yeah. for, a few, for about 30 seconds. <laughs> that's not a monster. <laughs> that's fine. To warm it up. Yeah, yeah. But also, why liver? That's not, you're not getting your hands in that that easily, yeah. are you? No. Also, you're going to rack up quite a bill, you know? It's, you know <laughs> also, yeah. if you're the butcher, like, what, what fucking <laughs> 16 year old you're only selling liver to over 70s right if they're coming and be like I fancy some liver in tribe and you're like alright here come the fucking pen a 16 year old can I get two pounds of liver please it's like the third time that day he's went in for liver <laughs> I heard uh, again another comedian I'll not mention his name but I'll tell you after the podcast his one and this was very telling was if you take like a toilet roll tube Right, and apparently you get toilet roll and you wet it and you like put it in the like fold it around the hole so it goes in there. That was like a fucking Neanderthal fleshlight right. back when. No, that can't be comfortable. Can it? Can't be comfortable at all. Surely. No. No. I don't know what you're saying to that. You've been very quiet. I don't think he's He does all of these. Which way we any of this stuff? We want to live the lives, ain't no. but, uh, Dan, but you know when you did Conan and he interviewed you, was it like this? <laughs> <laughs> the, the second we cut to commercial, he was like, you ever put two bits of liver in the toilet? Said, oh man, nothing like it. <laughs> oh, amazing. I can't use, so, uh, like, with, with flashlights... Right, I've never used one, never and not, tried and just because, just because I'm scared, because I because reckon it's better than the real thing. Not that I think it's better than the real thing, but like wanking is good for me because wanking's not wanking's not like sex, right? I I think of sex while it's happening, but it's not what sex is like. So it's really easy to like separate those two things. Like I explained to my fiance, like. Like she'll be like, did you just go for a wank? And I'm like, yeah, absolutely. She's like, and she's never. She, whenever I, whenever she's found out I've gone for a wank during the day, she often reacts like I've like I've thrown the last of her four day old birthday cake out. <laughs> like she's just like, oh, <laughs> you know, I you no no I I get it, but you know what, I could have had that. But what, like, why are you? I'm here, and I'm like because like some of these just aren't good enough for you, man. Like some of these just need yeah. to get out of the system. <laughs> yeah. Some of this is a stress thing. Some of this thing is like something has happened in my life and I just need a little fucking, you know. A bit, bit of endorphins. Aye, a little bit of endorphins. So I can, you know, it's not, it's not sex with the love of my life, but it's getting rid of that fucking thing. Whereas if it feels, I'm, I imagine fleshlights feel really good because yeah, right. they're designed to yeah are you worried that you're going to leave your fiance for, <laughs> for a flesh, flesh? <laughs> <laughs> Why, uh, not leave her but like <laughs> but neglect her <laughs> like, like get to a point where I'm like oh you know I can either spend the time kissing her neck playing with all her erogenous zones getting her into the moods making sure she comes and then getting my orgasm or Fuck it! I just don't want to. Danny, you were saying it's about two weeks till your wedding. This is just cold feet. This is normal. Everyone <laughs> <laughs> experiences this. As long as it's cold feet and not cold liver. Going <laughs> <laughs> back to the America thing, right? Because it's really hard to go back into a different yeah. conversation this is after I've been jacked off in America, bro. <laughs> I've wanked up, man. I wank on airplanes all the well, time. It's fat. Well, it's interesting. Let's, let's man. They're long flights. Yeah. Where do you go to wank? Cut. on? Bathroom. Yeah, obviously. Yeah. Where, where did you think it was going to be? No, the reason I asked that is because I actually seen you talking <laughs> on an American podcast once and you're telling some story. About all oh, the foot job? Uh-huh. Aye, aye. What was that? I'm I was... sorry for bringing it back to this, but... <laughs> <laughs> this is where the people want! Uh, I was flying from uh, America back to the UK and my original flight was cancelled for whatever reason just luck I got booked onto a better flight on the way back instead of it being like via somewhere it was direct to London it was an almost empty flight and as an apology 
they put us in the business lounge, but not business seats. But when we got on the plane, like it was fucking dead. So it's like three row, four seats, row three. And I'm in the middle of the four. There's like a mother and two teenage daughters there. There's like me, small Filipino lady, two empty seats, aisle, two empty seats. And but the uh, server comes down and she orders champagne. I order some red wine. He's like, it's an empty flight. Fucking have two each. Who gives a fuck? And we're like, oh, okay. <laughs> we drink, we cheers, but we're watching our stuff. The meal comes out. He gives us more booze. We, we speak a bit. Uh, she's going back. To, she's flying back home to Norway to, uh, that's where her ex-husband's from. That's where her kid lives. She's going back to see her kid. She's been away all day. He was an ex-husband the whole time. You didn't split them up. She wasn't like watching you stand up on the plane. <laughs> and I'm like, get on board Wi-Fi and dump him now. Slay. Uh, no, this is like well before all that. And uh, then the lights fuck. So we have a bit of a conversation during th- our meal, but it do- it doesn't go beyond. I'm a comedian. She's a mother. We're both going home. We're both very excited. We have a bit of a laugh. I don't think it's flirty. And then all the lights dim. And then, like, the little armrest between us, she sort of lifts that up and then just sort of, and then puts a blanket over the two of us. And I'm like, okay, I don't mind a bit of fucking snuggling. <laughs> and then her hand, without any question or consent or anything, any <laughs> indication from me, got my cock out of my pants and just, without talking to me, just while she watched the movie, just wanked me oh off. Oh, my God. Oh, uh-huh. <laughs> and, like, man, and, like, to the point, like, man, if somebody's wanking, it's very obvious yeah. So like I got, I got like make a little fucking tent yeah. Yeah. with the the thing, which is still kind of obvious. Yeah. Super Arguably. obvious. You only do the tent when you get mugged. It's not very useful. Um, and she jokes me over and like and I, I, I'm. I, I come everywhere, all over this fucking shit. We're like, did, oh, you, did you manage to get your wee, <laughs> <laughs> your wee down in time? I'm surprised. I'm surprised you managed to come out or using a fucking toilet roll. <laughs> <laughs> what would you guys like for the meal? We'll have two sets of liver plates. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have any ch- any co- any chicken breast. We've got the ju- uncooked. I need the uncooked. Raw, uh, <laughs> to be raw. Um, I come all over this fucking sheet. She sort of laughs, and I'm not. I'm she not. Laughs? Yeah, man. Well, because I think it was like, I don't know. I don't want to say it was like super quick, but like in my head, I was like, <laughs> I'm like, this this can't last long. Like this is the definition yeah. of a time when this needs to be as quick as possible. <laughs> Danger wank, yeah. All right. Um, I'm not proud of this as an expert. This says a lot about me as a human being, but it's true. She wanks me off. She's a very beautiful woman, right? And she's uh, like, she's from Filipino. And Filipino is the lie you would come up with in high school. <laughs> if you, it's the race you would make up uh, if you were to tell a lie story, being like, oh, and I had sex with a Filipino woman or a tiger. So I'm like, there's no way, this is too good to be true. This is too good to be true. So I check to make sure she's got a fanny. <laughs> See. I know, I know, it's disgusting. It's fucking horrible, right? I because even if it wasn't, I came, right? So it's already there, right? So, but, but and so she, did she think you were going to pleasure her? And then you went, no, just checking. <laughs> well, no, that was also the thing. Like I, I'd done my, so I'm like, okay, I'm, you know, I'm she a, sexually assaulted you. It's time for you to return <laughs> the favor. <laughs> the favor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what me too meant, right? <laughs> That's, you've done it to me. I get to do it too. That's. So I go over there and, and she's got a vagina, which is great. And we finger her for for a bit. And 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 then she's sort of, she's happy with that. And we're still, and then at one point she's like, she turns around. So if you're there, if you're me, she sort of goes this way. And I've gotten the other blanket over us now. And I'm talking 20, 25 minutes after again, she's not said a word. In this time, the guy's come down and he's dropped off another bottle of red wine and another bottle of champagne. What are you watching, by the way? Big Bang Theory. <laughs> <laughs> I think I was watching, I think I was re-watching The Prestige. But oh, I... There you go. It's a good film. It's one of the, it's one of the best one of Christian Phil Nolan's finest bits of work. <laughs> <laughs> I really wanted it to be enjoyed in the skies. <laughs> oh, yeah, so he said that the fucking air steward came up. Are you enjoying the flight, sir? Yes, this is one of Christian Nolan's best <laughs> work. Finest work. Don't, well, don't look at the tent. It doesn't matter. <laughs> this is the greatest movie I've ever seen in my life. What is it? No idea, man. <laughs> um... 
so like, it's, it's, but because we, so we've got another table out on one of the other chairs. Anyway, she's like this. Our booze is there. And with her feet, with her bare feet under the duvet, she is able to pull down my zip, get my cock out, and wank me off with her feet. Again? Again. Right now, I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't have a foot fetish. Come on, give us that. It's just 10 minutes, for fuck's sake. <laughs> man, there was a bit of it to that. And I'm also, but I don't, I don't have a feet fetish, but I'm also not, I'm not one of these people that's like grossed out by feet. Yeah. Feet are feet. Yeah. Like if you, if, if somebody I'm with is in the fucking feet stuff, I'll give it a bash, but I'll never <laughs> request it personally. Sure. But fuck this made me question that like she man the dexterity I'm like there's no way this is it's been 25 minutes since I just fucking came. man seven minutes of her doing that with her fucking feet I just again over the second fucking blanket so we've got to stuff the second cummy fucking blanket under this thing in front of us we got like I then like, I've come twice so I desperately need to be I'm steaming drunk <laughs> and I go I walk down to the I, wa- I walked into the bathroom and I remember so vividly looking at myself in the mirror and just going, no one will ever believe you. <laughs> like, none, none of this story is believable. None of this, like, it's, man, not, I cannot exp- There was no flirting on my end. There was nothing that fucking suggested. Like, and I don't even think she was flirting that much. I mean, obviously, by the time she wanked me off, I was picking up those signals. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, and then I went back and I fucking slept for the remaining seven hours of that flight, man. I had four bottles of wine and I'd come Jeez. twice. I was <laughs> dead to the world. Fucking hell. And, and no one else seen it? No one... I don't think so. I fucking hope not. And if like if, if you did say I'm sorry, but it was a, it was a great day. I like, I like the idea that all those Christians that you've pissed off listening to that story and go, and you think well, we believe bullshit. <laughs> 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 There's no evidence of this. No, that is fucking mental, man. That's yeah. great. It's insane. Oh, it's- See, uh, the thing I was going to pick up on earlier because we've obviously been talking about wanking, right? Now, obviously, you <laughs> haven't, <laughs> you, you spend a lot of time in America, stuff like that. Even you've said it in passing, called it jerking off, right? Mm-hmm. Obviously, an American term for it. How do you find, like, when you're gigging in America, like, do you do, you do it more, like, kind of almost subconsciously now that you use more Americanisms and see with the accent? Because you've got an accent that's like, it's not like a Glaswegian one where it would be really, really difficult for them to understand, mm-hmm. like me, I think. Yes. And I don't think I would be willing to change my accent enough to be understood because everybody would be like, ah, don't fucking talk of that. But you've I've got, always had a fucking posh accent. You've always had the posh accent and then you've... You, it's more a neutral accent. It's more a neutral it's, accent. It's, 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 uh, apparently it's, it's, a th- it's mostly a Thurzo accent. My dad's from Thurzo, so apparently this is what a lot of Caithness people sound like. But also, man, I've been doing like stage stuff since I was young and yeah. been like doing international stuff. So I just learned to slow it down a bit more um i do like reference points are difficult like i the i always want to kill myself whenever i'm on stage here and if i ever if i ever say sidewalk or trash (laughs) on stage in scotland you can fucking feel the, <laughs> you can feel them being like, oh, here he is. <laughs> we travellers changed, does he? All right, forgot where you come from. Have you, you fucking wanker? <laughs> and I always get, and there's always a fucking laugh from it as well. And I do catch myself doing it. But man, it's only really in America. My, Kai Humphreys, the Jordy comic who fucking supports me, he is able to do his act in pretty much his full accent. Uh, slowed down reasonable amounts in Australia, in India, in Lithuania, in Estonia. In the places where it struggles a bit more is, uh, I would say, parts of Croatia, um, France, and maybe like Finland occasionally struggles with his accent. Or Americans. Americans put absolutely zero fucking effort <laughs> mm. into understanding anyone else. Like, Kai will be slowing down his voice and speaking to them normally, and they'll be like, I don't understand what you're saying. <laughs> what are these... What, it's the only country you go to. Like, you'll be in a restaurant, and they'll be like, would you want a drink? And you go, water. And because we drop the teas, yeah. they'll go, what? 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 And you go, water. <laughs> like, I don't know what that is. You go, right, well, you've, a- you've asked me... A, 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 th- you've asked me for a drink. <laughs> <laughs> what I've said starts with W and ends with R. <laughs> From your wild fucking experiences <laughs> delivering drinks to people, what do you think? But there's, they, there's no, there's no critical thinking in America. There's yeah. no, yeah. Um, 
let's put any effort in to make this foreigner feel fucking welcome. Mm. Um, but thankfully, because of the fucking posh twat accent and <laughs> uh, just slowing things down, I've always been able to be understood a bit more over there. But it's, oh, you know, only in certain bits of America. Like, yeah, there's other bits that are just fucking straight up terrifying that I might not. No. Well, because because as you said, man, I I do like antagonising people, and I do like annoying the audience, and that's absolutely fine in Scotland and England. Like somebody might throw something or call me a cunt, and I'll get the occasional fucking death threat or whatever, blah blah blah. In America, you will get shot. Like I <laughs> I have had guns pulled on me. I have really? had, have you? yeah, and in Indianapolis, yeah, yeah, Indianapolis, I had a guy in the front row. I did an anti-religion joke, and he lifted up his shirt and he showed me his gun. Fucking and he hell. went, and he just he very straight up went. He went, "You're really lucky. I don't fucking shoot you." And but <laughs> it's a good thing I'm a Christian. <laughs> <laughs> but there was another guy behind him, right, who could clearly see the fear in my face, and he went, "Oh, buddy, if he shoots you, I'll, I'll shoot, shoot him." <laughs> and it was That's just a shit deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not gonna <laughs> shot. Um, yeah, man. Real, like I don't. I get really bad. I'm working on it now. I get really bad road rage in Scotland, right? It's just I'll be like, this fucking cunt, you fucking piece of shit. In America, you could cut me off and run, and I'll be like, have a great day, sir. <laughs> Something clearly going wrong in your life. They are terrifying and deeply, deeply undereducated. <laughs> is this only certain areas like deep south or is this not like not just your audience even, again you're talking about <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah I think you've got to have something wrong with your brain to enjoy anything I've ever done <laughs> like it's, I only have a small amount of respect for my fans I'm like if you, if you like me that's fine if you love me what happened buddy what happened during you're doing you? yourself a disservice I watched The Adventures of Daniel and honestly <laughs> <laughs> the bit where I got my hand in the stuck in the condom machine. <laughs> Comedy, fucking. I remember gross. that. Man. <laughs> I, I remember that. Too. BBC Three. I was going to bring it up. What is the what is the match? Because I seen you were hanging about with David Schwimmer. Aye. A while ago, oh, really? like you must have had some fucking mad, like celebrity show busy shit that you thought this. How is this even happening? Oh yeah, I mean David Schwimmer is still a fucking weird one like he refers to us as fr like me and him as friends you got his, you got his number <laughs> the guy I do from yeah, yeah. I, I can text him now Let's and he prank would prank him <laughs> <laughs> see he'll do an advert for us uh, <laughs> it's Matthew Perry I'm back on the gear <laughs> I need your help you said you'll always be there for me I remember that one bit <laughs> um yeah, but he he's uh, whenever I'm in New York and whenever he's in L London, we meet up and we go for meals. And he's a really really big comedy fan. Uh -huh. Like he watches all the specials on Netflix, and you can just sit down and talk to him about everything. He'll tell you what his new favorite Bill Barber is. He'll tell you why he thinks like you know Burt Kreischer's new stuff is not as good as old stuff. It's like really <laughs> some real fucking conversation. Fucking hell, fucking hell. Um, fucking. Uh, Cal Penn is one of my very good friends now, as in Harold and Kamara get the munchies and wow. from House and from Designated. He's coming to the wedding. Amazing. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, you know, stay with him. We do karaoke. But, like, just... His one was a weird one. I was doing my first run at the uh, Soho Playhouse in New York. And, like, I go... And this is... I've only done, like, two Conans at this point. So, like, I get there on... Only. Only. <laughs> only. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's about 15 people in on night one, uh, it's about 150 seat room, so it's like 10% fill. But man, I've done the fringe before, we all know. So you go, okay, we build, that's how this works. Next day, there's like 25 people in, the day after that, there's like 37 people in. And about on that third day, I walk out on stage, and because it's such a small room, you can see everyone, I'm like, that's fucking, that's a Kumar from Amazon, Kumar getting munchies. <laughs> I'm like, but I'm, but I'm also like, why Why on fucking, why on earth would he be the fucking audience? What a yeah. weird thing. <laughs> so I do the show and he seems to be enjoying it. And then I go downstairs because that's where people go down and drink afterwards. And uh, I get down there and there's just an Indian man drinking. And I'm like, oh, I'm racist. <laughs> <laughs> like, and I was just, I was like, hey, I'm in America, land of the stars. He said, it must have been him. So I feel really bad, and I speak to this Indian guy because in my head I'm apologising to him that I thought he was hard. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, come on, I'm not telling him any of this. And then I get out afterwards, and I've got a tweet from Cal saying, "Hey man, I came to your show. I loved it. I'm just around the corner if you want to join me for a pint." And I'm like, "Fucking oh, wow. absolutely, go round, have a couple of drinks." And I'm like, "I'm like, why on earth were you at that fucking show?" And he was like, "Man, I just I walked past the venue. I saw your poster and just walked in and." 
And me and him have been friends ever since. I did a magic Class. trick to him, which is a, it's not even a real magic trick, but it's <laughs> didn't get you, it from the prestige. The we, uh, it's mad. It's basically you take a fucking penny, you convince someone you're about to make it disappear, you put napkin over it do that and then you lift up and you're just flipping them off and it's all about the build up you make them think the coin's gonna I did that to him he thought it was fucking hysterical <laughs> and I made him promise to me and I think he has done it because I made him do it to Barack Obama <laughs> because he uh, he was he wrote he was part of Obama's campaign. He worked with him in the White House. He wrote speeches for him. He was he, that's the reason he left House is because he went to work with the Obama administration wow. for eight years. Wow! Like and it's, so I'm like I'm that's like a crazy job. Yeah, right? it? yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, insane. his books, his book is amazing, he, and he explains sort of how it happens. Like you know, when Bar Barack was coming up, he didn't want to buy into this whole "this guy's going to change it all and be different." And then speaking to Barack Obama, and when, when he talks about him, he's like, "Man, there's just there isn't another man like him. It really was special. And I couldn't fucking give up." I have a theory that I I set up the Conor McGregor Floyd Mayweather fight. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. So. Uh, before Conor McGregor was Conor McGregor, back when he was just like not, he, I think he'd knocked like two cunts out in the UFC. Yeah. But uh, this was when I was obsessed with UFC and I was obsessed with Conor McGregor because he used to go, I'm going to fucking slap this cunt in the first round. And then he would slap that cunt in the first <laughs> round. And then you'd be like, yes. <laughs> Uh, every time I'm over in America and I'm doing Conan, I'm hanging out with JP Buck the Booker and I'm dragging him down to watch the UFC with me. Yeah. And I'm like, you've got to watch this Irish guy. This Irish guy's amazing. He's funny. He's badass. Like, he talks fucking shit. He backs it up. And, he's, and JP slowly starts getting into Conor McGregor. And JP messages me and goes, uh, somebody is suggesting that we get Conor McGregor on Conan. You've watched some phrases, you've seen all this media stuff. Do you think he would actually be legitimately good on this show? And I was like, a hundred fucking percent, man. <laughs> yeah. He would fuck, he, he would be so unbelievably good. Uh, he's like, cool, I'll get it done. He books Connor onto the show. I wake up the next morning in Edinburgh at home to a missed voice call from JP. And it is a minute and a half phone call from Conor McGregor <laughs> thanking me for getting him on the Conan O'Brien show, where he's like, hey man, <laughs> JP says you're a massive fan. He says, you know, you're the reason that I got on uh, the show. I'm really grateful. I hope I didn't fucking let you down. This is really cool of you, blah, blah, blah. Like, me and Kai jumping up and down on the bed because fucking <laughs> Mike Tyson's just been like, hey, I'm aware of you. We're losing our fucking mind. <laughs> yeah. That, that, Conan O'Brien appearance is the is the appearance where he said I could beat up Floyd Mayweather <laughs> and that's the one where Floyd Mayweather in articles he was like that's when I first became aware of him and the second he said on television that he could knock me out that's when I fucking agreed to the fight and that's oh, yeah. fucking hell that's amazing so man. in my head I'm like that's down to me I'm like and ju just give me 1% of, those, <laughs> of that fucking box office man <laughs> so you've brought you've Split up a lot of couples, but you brought two people together. In the <laughs> scenario, I basically. brought I bought two of the biggest pieces of shit <laughs> in human fucking history. You're not a bigger fan now. No, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. no. Well, you know, there are people. far too many rumors about yes. Conor McGregor out there for them to just be rumors at this point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like it's like those Bill know. Cosby rumors that were around for thirty years. The views of Daniel Sloss and not the views. Of, uh, <laughs> but yeah, allegedly. Oh. Um, <laughs> That's just because you're a big fan of Connor as well. No, I feel the same as you. I used to. I like loved that documentary when he was coming up and stuff. And then just I uh, fucked in it, honey. Oh but, man, he's just become a big fucking loser. Like there was a video of him, and please don't kick my head in Connor. Yeah, yeah. There was a, this could be the first talk show appearance that sets up the fight between you. And <laughs> <laughs> Love how you're calling this a talk show. Yeah, bit of an upgrade. Yeah. Why not? We've actually got Connor on next week, and we're going to see faces he can buy. You know. Oh. <laughs> There was one of him on, on the beach, like, just clearly coked off his nut because he's always fucking coked off his nut. And his, like, two-year-old son was coming over to him and, like, crying and trying to explain to his dad that, like, another kid had pushed him over. And just Conor McGregor coked up was telling his son to beat the fuck out of this other child <laughs> because, like, we're fucking McGregor's widow. And I'm like, oh, you're an awful father. <laughs> you're, like, a re not only are you an awful role model for actual people now, you're an awful role model for your age. And just every time he does something new, it's just worse and worse. And proper 12 tastes like ass, man. <laughs> 
<laughs> I've only had it once, but you know, I'm not a whiskey connoisseur. I would mm-hmm. say, yeah, yeah it was alright. You know, I don't. I'll drink probably like. Do, do you want to know how bad Proper Twelve is? They oh. did uh, that like that World Cup knockout thing that like brands did, where they were like, "What's better, Cadbury cream egg or dairy milk?" And they would knock out stages all the way up to the final two. Conor McGregor did it with Proper Twelve cocktails, and do you know what the winner was? Proper Twelve and Coke. <laughs> <laughs> like not the old fashioned not any of the fucking martinis down. they're like the best version of this drink is when you cannot taste any of this fucking drink and that was the people that drank it the point for you mentioned uh, Connor being a father you're a father yourself these yes, days Daniel I. how has that changed well obviously it must have changed your life in a lot of ways has it changed your approach to, to comedy at all or you know, is it softened you in any way? It's definitely softened. Oh, yeah, it softened me fucking heaps. And I was soft before, but it's just sort of, it's much harder to hide the softness now. Uh-huh. Because, you like. Get a wee tent. <laughs> <laughs> Can we get another blanket? I've cried on both of these. <laughs> <laughs> the poor British Airways steward just been like, these are fucking soaking. Jesus. It's better than the crispy ones I had two months ago. Um, my biggest uh, my biggest problem with it was, and I don't know if you feel the same way, but I had real barriers in my head about writing any jokes about becoming a dad just because there's just something, I don't want to say hack about doing jokes about being a parent. It's a certain type of comedy at that point, I suppose. Aye, and uh-huh. it's just, and it, but it's also just one of the most well-trodden subjects in fucking history. And don't get me wrong, there are comedians out there who are parents who have some of the best parenting jokes yeah. like in the world, quotable fucking stuff, really good stuff. But there is part of me that like as a fucking gatekeeping purist that has definitely in the past shat on comedians for like, People that used to challenge the system, becoming parents, then suddenly walking on day, on stage one day and being like, so my daughter said the darndest thing the other day. And you're like, <laughs> fucking, you've lost your edge. <laughs> to then be doing that, my, because man, you're a parent, you've got fuck all else to talk about, yeah. really. And it, it changes you in certain ways, it doesn't change you in other ones. And it's got, it's so, it's, it's just so ripe for fucking, uh, for comedy. So, I mean, I've just accepted the fact that I'm a hypocrite in every aspect. Like, you know, I did the show Jigsaw. Everyone thinks I'm a hypocrite now that I'm getting married. Mm. Right. I used to shit all over old, like, comedians that did jokes about parenthood. Now I'm a comedian that's got 45 minutes in his new show about fucking hate parenthood. Mm. Let's just hope to God I'm not a hypocrite about X. (laughs) 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 How do you feel about the marriage thing then? So do you, because I guess your argument in in the Jigsaw show was about when people are in bad relationships, Ah, you're you're in favour of it as long as it's obviously for the right reasons. Man, Jigsaw, I explicitly said that I do believe in true love because I've seen examples of true love in my life and that's how I knew all the other relationships were bullshit um i understand people being like you know it's hypocritical because in people's heads like jigsaw came out in 2017 Uh and then i was engaged in 2021 but like i wrote jigsaw in 2013 Uh but it just didn't come out for four fucking years because uh, nobody was fucking interested at the time um and again man like you know I, i i i don't think it's hypocritical but then again, I, I wouldn't uh, because, you know, I, I, I'm in a relationship where I don't compromise anything. My partner, for whatever fucking reason, loves me for who I am. Like, don't I'm sure I piss her off at points and she'll bring those things up. But it's not like I'm not scared of her mm. and I'm not there's, I don't think there's anything I wouldn't t- tell her. It feels for me that I am in a good, very, very healthy relationship. And that's yeah. why I don't think it's hypocritical. But uh, watch me get divorced in five years <laughs> and just the internet lose its mind being like, yes. I think another one is it you. Yeah. Yeah. You're the final number that's added to Oh, it. God, yeah. <laughs> you know, the, I'm the 400th divorce. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be an awkward gig for the fucking minister doing it, though, if they've seen any of your fucking material. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, we got one of them. I think it was just called Celebrants. You minister. Oh, I, 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 I've done that. I've, I'm married my cousin and uh, her uh, what husband I was going to say <laughs> right <laughs> sorry the way, <laughs> way <laughs> five <laughs> jokes yeah, yeah, yeah. I shouldn't have paused at that moment <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, my cousin to her husband uh, now are you five as well no, no, no I'm, I'm from, oh, I from close oh he didn't marry his cousin as well. oh, that was uh, 
Uh, yeah. but, listen, well, listen, that's been absolutely great. Thanks a lot for, for joining us, Daniel. Um, before we get going, I'll let you go. Uh, you get any white plug to our, our modest... Uh, um, no, ju- I just, I just want to, I just want to plug the fact that I'm a real comedian, and I wasn't, I wasn't <laughs> lying to that lady in Auckland. Yeah, for once. And I really hope you listen. You are that lady. Please do get in touch. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm so, and I'm so sorry I didn't remember your name. Like, man, she was, a, she was a fucking sweetheart from start to finish. Like, she was right. really, really good. Normally, customs can be quite a robotic thing when it's like some job's worth is in a position of power and they fucking abuse it and they like make you feel uncomfortable mm. this was a fucking Scottish mum on the other side of the planet being like <laughs> I'll help you get your bags you don't need this you don't need this you need that one I think the boys are funnier than you <laughs> <laughs> um, so I no just 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 be aware of me that's it that's all that's I want it. that's why I'm here and go and watch your Netflix specials you've got oh three. yeah and you've got two you've got two specials now you can get on your website is yeah that right? yeah X is uh, my show about uh, rape and sexual assault. It's a fucking doozy. Uh, it's for free on my website because I, I just didn't want to charge people for that one. And then if you want, uh, Socio is is a five year old show that was uh, filmed in Austin. Uh, it's available for a fiver on the website, or you could find one of the many illegal streams of it somewhere. I'm sure. <laughs> and also, if you if you're like if you want to oh if you can't get any of the any of my stuff anywhere, just illegally download it. I do not <laughs> give a shit. My management fucking hates that, but like, it's man. Just if you can watch anything I do illegally, please do. Just don't watch the Adventures of Titan. <laughs> It is, it, it is objectively not worth anyone's time. <laughs> Need to go on the dark web for that one. <laughs> yeah, the real dark, dark web. Yeah, People will sell you child porn <laughs> before that. They're like, are you sure you want to? He just, he gets his hand stuck in a condom machine. And that's like the big gag. <laughs> well, boom. Thanks, Amazing. James, man. Thanks very um, much. Cheers, man. For you guys ever, please remember to like and subscribe on YouTube. Give us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And you can follow us at some laugh pod on instagram tiktok and twitter and send any questions to some laugh pod at gmail.com thanks all for tuning in guys and we'll speak to you soon cheers cheers, cheers daniel no thanks worries. mate cheers man thanks, thanks for having me